welcome to a new episode of The Woolly Thistle. I'm here with my co-host Maggie. Uh, my name is Corinne and I own and operate The Woolly Thistle and it's great to be back with you. We have so much to talk about, don't we Maggie? <laughs> we do. We certainly do. But before we get into all of that, we do want to announce the winner from the last episode. And our winner wins a $25 gift certificate and her name is Sarah Lussman. She said, love your podcast. You've hired some talented people. So much fun getting to know them and view their talents. Keep the videos coming. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that you appreciate all my lovely people. And of course, you're meeting some of them through the podcast now. We have quite a big team, don't we? We have quite a lot of people doing a lot of different things. Yeah. And they're all brilliant and wonderful. And um, uh, everybody, <laughs> everybody is needed. There's just so much to do all the time. I think it feels big to us, but mm. there's not really that many of us. Um, it just feels big. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. There's there's a good handful or two, though. <laughs> <laughs> We're not quite corporate yet. Right. Right. So what should we talk about first? I think talk about, do you have any current FOs? I do not have any FOs. Okay. I have historical knits. I'm wearing Ooh. a sweater. Yeah, funnily enough, we are both wearing Shetland, uh, Jameson Smith Shetland Heritage. We did not send a memo to each other, no. just showed up to work today this way. Yep. So you talk about yours. Um, so I'm wearing um, the Belmont cardigan, it's by Gudrun Johnston. Yes, it's lovely. Um, it does, I can button it, but you can tell the lace sort of like shrinks up. But this is how I usually wear it. Yeah, and this was anything. from her book Shetland Trader 2. I just bought the individual pattern. Yeah, I, I know it is in one of the books. It's but in I one of our. Yeah, to get it's the lovely, book. and but um, it is, it's in heritage. And who designed this? Oh, it's good. Yeah, so it's a little bit. It's cropped, but I like it with the shirt underneath. It fits really well. I'm wearing one of my favorite shirts. It's really really nice. So, yeah, and this is not one that I hand knitted myself. I bought this when I was in Shetland, and I went to visit Jameson and Smith, and Ella Gordon was there, and. Um, and um, Ollie was there, I had a nice chat with him. But anyway, um, I bought this right off the rack and it is knitted in heritage in the Madder colorway. And they machine knit it all the way up to here and then they hand knit the yoke, which I love. Really love this. It has a similar motif to the cockatoo braid, doesn't it? Yep. Like the, well, I the think tree, I'd like the motif is yeah, traditional. Yeah, the, yes, exactly. And I love uh, the use of the tree because you can put um, center decreases in it. Oh, and yes. that's where you can do your shaping a lot of the time. It's right in that the stalk of the tree or the trunk of the tree. I mean, so anyway, um, I felt very, very um, guilty. It was a guilty pleasure buying this. I didn't have to knit it myself. And I just walked out of the shop wearing it, <laughs> tried it on, left wearing it. So yeah, and you know, um, the heritage line that we're both wearing is Jameson and Smith's worsted spun, traditional, um, traditionally inspired yarn. Um, the colors, the dyes they use, and um, also that it's worsted spun is quite unusual for a Shetland wool, I would say. Um, and it makes it a wee bit drapier and very soft and lovely. So this is one of my favorite favorite things. Um, I hardly ever wear any woolies now that I've not knitted. In fact, I'd say I don't, except for this. I still do have sweaters that I've not mm -hmm. knit. Um, don't you dare show up on this show with that. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't do that. I know you're kidding. Yeah, I'm kidding, <laughs> but you wouldn't do that. <laughs> no, this is the place to show off the hand knit. <laughs> that's right, that's right. I, yeah, I don't, I might have one or two that I yeah. bought a while back, but I don't know. The wear goal them. is definitely that eventually yeah. it'll be all hand, hand knit, knits. But yeah. um, you've been knitting sweaters longer than I have. That's got. true. That's true. Like this was one of my first it's beautiful. sweaters. Yeah. It's really pretty. Mm -hmm. um, I love this. I saw the lace in it and I was like, oh, I need that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can really see it. There. And gorgeous good. set in sleeves. Yeah. Look at that. that it just felt like. And Genius. with the shaping um, uh, and it right fits up to really well, like yeah. it's very comfortable. I, I love that it fits your back nicely. We, we're not billowing out in the back, which has been a problem I've always had. Yeah. Okay, so um, so that's what so that's historical knit. That's a historical knit. Do you want to um, talk about what you're knitting on right now? Yeah. So and actually, it's kind of timely. So I knit the Belmont, this Belmont cardigan. Mm -hmm. I want to say for maybe our first sweater cow. Gosh. What, was so that, it like was a few years four ago. Four years ago, it's yeah. In, it's in my Ravelry projects, but... Um, well, so. I know we were still, I think, at my house working there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I remember going upstairs and buying the yarn. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so what I'm working on now is this 
current. Um, yes, gorgeous. Still working on my Defiant cardigan. I have one completed sleeve. Aww. It's um, beautiful. On, on just and waist needles. we got lots of lovely comments. One comment made me laugh, actually. Um, she said it's so nice when people say they don't know something. <laughs> I say that all the time. So, yes. but we didn't know why you were having a pearl bump. And we yeah, got lots there of were comments. Lots of great comments. Um, one I thought was particularly smart was, like, they were all smart. Um, but that it does, it do, prevents the jog. Yeah. Um, that it hides the jog. It hides the jog in the color of art. Um, so it does, it looks pretty nice. It looks really nice. So um, there, that is a thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it hides that and also a faux seam. So. Yep. Um, Beautifully done. Mine correct. would be absolutely, oh, not yeah. like this. So I did wash this. You can kind of see a line here. Yeah. And I, I think that's just where I washed it. And it did, it kind of loosened it up a little nice. bit. Um, nice. And it'll probably fit similarly to these sleeves, which is a little sl snug, but I can fit it under a sweater. But and... how are you going to feel? Well, if, if you wore this with a t-shirt under it. I'd be fine. Me too. So, um, because somebody did say, oh, having your sleeves so tight, how would you ever get anything under yeah. it? I would wear this with a t-shirt under it and have this right up against my skin. That, either that's a, either a t-shirt or, or honestly like thermal like underwear. Can, um, not not thermal underwear, but like I I yeah I, I can fit it. Yeah, it's comfortable. Like you can see, it has a little. You're very tiny. Um, <laughs> it just it gives me anxiety. So I wouldn't put it over another sweater, but no. Um, so I've been working on second sleeve. I was hoping to be done today. I'm not done today. That's um, all right. But it's not a race. No, it's not. Enjoy the um, process and let. Let's just look. Oh, good grief. That's gorgeous. I, I, the I texture. really am enjoying working on it. It's such a pretty pattern. It really is. And just wait till you get started on the body. I know. Ooh. What's great is um, I'll start on the body knowing that when that's done, it's just it's done. It's just it's done. That's right. Um, and I'm still working on, like, these are the first two balls. <laughs> so amazing. Um, I was kind of amazed that I'm just now getting yeah. near the end. Yeah. I so, had to re-ball one because the cat had his, he, mm -hmm. he went crazy on this one. He didn't break it, so it was okay. Yeah. He laid down on my knitting bag last And just week. look at, it's got a nice shine to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is woolen spun. This is Rama Fennel Garn. But look, it's got a nice shine to it, which mm. you wouldn't necessarily expect. It's gorgeous. No, it's it's great. You're going to feel like a million dollars wearing that. I am, I am. So I'm cheating all over the place. I did <laughs> not start a new sweater for the cow, which is going along quite well. Where are we in it the is. cow? Is it, are we We are halfway? about halfway, I think. So how's it going out there? We'd love to we know. We had some FOs already in the, um, I think it was last Monday I had to open the FO. Amazing. Thread. Somebody tagged me. It's always helpful to tag me. Um, <laughs> but, but I was sort of stunned, like already we have, <laughs> we have FOs already. That's amazing. Um, but yeah, they're fantastic. So we're looking uh, to have a Zoom call with everyone yeah. uh, any day now. So um, be on our newsletter list to know when we set that date for we haven't quite decided there's so much going on that we have to find a date that works for us both um and coordinates with family uh, events so exactly <laughs> so fun. yeah so we are we are working on that we will announce it in the newsletter but we'd love to have you join on a zoom call with us um so anyway as i as i was saying i'm cheating and i did not start a new project i basically um this is the Fantouche, just while we're looking at it. Uh, you saw this last time, knitted by Maggie's sister, Marie, who's a wonderful knitter, and she's knitting samples for us. And this was knitted in Jagger Spun, and it's beautiful. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that. But anyway, look, here she is. She's starting to Yay. take shape. I have yet to steek her, but I did put the button bands on, and I've got my buttons placed. And I just need to sew in ends. Um, all the edging is done. What a drama this thing has been, honestly. But she's beautiful. She really is um, fitting nicely. So we'll we'll talk more about this. We have a lot to get through this episode. So we'll talk about this one next time. So I did finish that as much as I have finished it. Can I just say one thing about yeah. that? Is that we currently have um, the Victory Cardigan in the test knit process. Oh, right. I'm still looking for a couple test knitters, mostly for the smaller sizes and the largest sizes. Um, you can find all the information in the Ravelry group and so, uh, also a little bit, I think, in our Facebook group. Um, so feel free to either email if you think you might. Yeah, help us out. I would love to see all the sizes tested. That would be yeah. really good. Otherwise, you know who will be knitting about it and talking about it yet again. <laughs> yep, no prizes for that. Okay, so, but I've been knitting on my, which I lovingly think of as um, so an egg carton. 
but this is Autumn's End by Alana Dacos and it's all over lace and it's knitted in Rowan felted tweed which we just restocked so we should have a nice supply of that. I've just joined the arms and so now we're going to be doing the raglan decreases up to the neck and it should be finished hopefully I maybe I'll be wearing it I don't know next time we visit. This is such fun to knit on. Um, by the way, the yarn is lovely to knit with. It's really, really nice and it's soft and I think it's gonna wear really well. Um, I did block out this a while back so you can see that it does flatten out and open up a wee bit. But this is really fun, a really fun pattern to knit. It's been, a, I don't know, five or so years. Um, but I knitted one before. If you're a regular viewer, you'll know that I had issues with that because well, I have issues all the time <laughs> and I tell you all about them and uh, we learn from that. But anyway, uh, this I'm hoping has more drape and will not bounce up like the springy yarn. I erroneously knitted it in first time. So that's what I'm knitting on and we're getting, we're closing in, which is really exciting. I will say the other one's still pretty even if it, it does is, bounce up. It does, really yes. Pretty. I just wear it with a long t-shirt underneath and I wear it around the house. I mean, I don't tend to wear it out and it's lo it is lovely. That's why I wanted to. Show. Did I? <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, probably just to show you how short it was, maybe, or I don't, I don't know. know. It's so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are so um, hard on ourselves, aren't we? Yeah. I mean, not just you and me, but everybody is, yeah. I think. Uh, not on us, but on themselves. Our toughest critics. We are our toughest cr critics, for sure. Yeah. Okay, so. It's the same thing like when you're talking to a knitter and they point out the mistakes. Oh, yeah. Well, what, what gives? You know, like you, you, you buy something new and someone says, oh, that's nice. And the first thing I hear myself saying, yeah, I got it at TJ Maxx for like $10. It's like, <laughs> why? <laughs> Somebody's paying you a compliment. Just say thank you. Yeah. 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 We'll practice it. We are works in product process ourselves, for yes. sure. Um, but yeah, so we've got the sweater cowl happening right now. Mm -hmm. Ooh, you have another historical knit that. I do. Do we want to show that now or later? Because actually we're going to go to Caitlin soon. So maybe we'll show that after. Yeah, we'll show that after. All right, that sounds good. You stick around Thanks. for that. <laughs> so we're going to go to Caitlin now, who um, has been with us once before. Caitlin, as you will know if you've ever emailed us, is our front, uh, front person who's answering all emails or getting them to the people that need to... Um, need to answer your questions. Caitlin is lovely and she has recorded a really great segment. I think she's talking a little bit about button bands and she has an FO and a whip going on. So uh, we'll see you after we visit with Caitlin and let's go. Hello everyone. So glad to be here on the Shopcast with you again today. My name is Caitlin and I'm on the staff here at the Wally Thistle. I just have a couple of projects to share with you today that I've been working on. Uh, the first is what I'm wearing here. This is the Carbeth Cardigan by Kate Davies. I showed you my progress on this last time and I've since finished it. So this is, yes, Kate Davies pattern. It is written for her own DK weight yarn, but I knit mine in Rowan felted tweed. I talked about that yarn more last time. I knit mine in two different colors and held them double for sort of a marled effect. So I've got those here. This is alabaster, sort of the lightest color with some tweed in there. And this is carbon. This is a cardigan that's knit back and forth. And then you finish with this kind of folded over collar and then picking up the button band. It's got this exaggerated raglan sort of here and it's a little bit cropped. <laughs> um, I knit mine about an inch longer than the pattern called for in my size, knowing that I tend to like a little bit more length. And I'm really happy with how it turned out, the fit, um, the feel of it. I think I'll wear it a lot this fall. So I just wanted to share one thing that I kind of got a little stuck on while I was knitting this. Uh, I feel like with every project, you always learn something. And with this cardigan, I got a little bit stuck at the button band. I feel like picking up stitches for a button band always involves a little bit of guesswork. In this case, um, the pattern instructs you to knit, pick up and knit just a set number of stitches. For my size, it was 59 stitches. 
I knew that mine was going to have to be a little different since I did add a little bit of length. So I wanted to do a little calculating to make sure that my button band would lay nicely. And there's just a little bit of math involved in that. So I'll try to explain that briefly. If you wanna read a lot about picking up button bands and calculating and ratios, I know that Kelburn Woolens has a nice post about all the details on getting it just right. Um, the general rule is when you are picking up stitches, you want to pick up three out of every four stitches. Basically, our stitches when we're knitting are not perfectly square. They tend to be shorter and wider. And that's why when you have a gauge swatch, your stitch count and your row count are different to reach that four inches. So when you, when you knit most of the sweater this way and then go to pick up stitches that are facing 90 degrees different, um, they're not going to fit exactly correctly if you pick up one um, stitch for every row as you go up the whole button band. So the general rule is to pick up three of every four and that way you won't have too many stitches. It won't kind of buckle and ruffle a little bit with too many stitches in there. But I wasn't quite sure if that's what Kate Davies had done in her original pattern. So I kind of reverse engineered a little bit of what she did to figure out if that's the general um, thing that I should do too. 59 stitches over this whole cardigan opening is a little bit too many to um, just kind of eyeball it. <laughs> and I wanted to just kind of start off correctly right from the get-go. So what I did is I looked at the schematic for the cardigan and I figured there was a measurement for the yoke depth of eight inches and then a measurement of the underarm to the bottom hem also of eight inches. So I figured Kate Davies was assuming I'd have about 16 inches of button band length to pick up. Mine was 17 since I had added that extra inch. And then um, she tells you to pick up 59 stitches. I figured um, based on the gauge, she was probably assuming I would have about 80 rows, 20 stitches for four inches in rows, um, stretched out over 16 inches would be 80 rows. Um, 59 into 80 is almost exactly three out of every four. So I was pretty confident that she was actually sticking with the general rule of picking up every three of four stitches. So that's what I went ahead and did. I ended up with a few more because of that extra length I had added, but I think it turned out just fine. Lays um, pretty well. So that's just a little hint if you feel like giving yourself that extra confidence before you go and pick up all those fiddly stitches. <laughs> Um, so I think that's about all I wanted to share with you on the cardigan. I'm very happy with how it turned out and the fabric, a little bit of tweediness, a little bit of the alpaca coming through. It was a lot of fun. And next I want to show you my project that I've been working on uh, for the sweater knit along we have going on right now. Along with many others, I am knitting a vanilla sweater. I got the kit in color 4136. Oh, my light's a little bright. This is a nice minty green color. Sort of catches it there. Um, this is Rama Fennel Garden and Corrine's own pattern for the vanilla sweater. Lots and lots of you have knit it and are knitting it currently for the knit along. And I figured being part of the Wooly Thistle team, I really should have knit one too. We get lots of questions on it and lots of orders for the kits. So I'm joining right in. I also bought an extra skein. This is color 4121. I love the sweater as it is, just the plain one color. Uh, I think that's really wearable, but I just couldn't help myself. I wanted to play with some colors. <laughs> and so I ordered this skein to kind of go along with it. I think the two together are kind of like a penny with a little patina on it, sort of um, pretty combo. Um, 
knitting for me, especially when I'm making garments, I do consider how I'm going to wear this as it fits into my wardrobe. Um, I tend to wear kind of neutral things, um, but knitting is not just about getting something in my wardrobe, it's also the creative process. And I said last time, I think picking out projects and planning those is just as fun as actually knitting them and wearing them. So I couldn't resist um, doing a little extra play with this sweater. Um, so this is uh, what's going so far. I have done the contrast pearl bump around the neckline. Corrine has a separate video on our YouTube channel just about how to get this contrast pearl bump. So you can check that video out. Then I'm also adding some stripes here at the bottom. Uh, I knew I wanted some extra length and rather than just buying a bigger kit to have some extra yarn to work with on the body, I figured adding stripes in a different color would, would work nicely. So the stripes are just two rows of the copper and then a row where I do three stitches of copper and then one of the green, three copper, one green along. I'm just kind of eyeballing how I like the, the stripe space. I think that's looking nice. I'll probably do that on the sleeves as well. And um, yeah, I, I did a little bit of thinking as I was planning this and thinking about if I wanted to do stripes or if I wanted to do a little color work. This sweater, uh, because it doesn't have any waist shaping from the underarms, you're just knitting straight down until you split for the hem. Uh, this sweater could be a great sort of surface to add other color work motifs. Um, I've also seen some people add beautiful lace to the bottom instead of the split hem. And so I considered doing some color work down there. I, uh, I'm especially eager to look in that Selbu Patterns book that we got recently. There's beautiful books of just um, traditional motifs, uh, color work ideas that you can plug into whatever knitting project you're doing. So I did a little bit of math again to figure out what kind of uh, motif would fit well into this pattern. Um, basically what I did is I looked at once you've split for the sleeves um, and cast on some underarm stitches and you're ready to just knit straight down. You look at that stitch count and then I was just doing a little bit of dividing to see what kind of numbers divide evenly into that stitch count. In the size that I'm knitting, 196 stitches divides nicely by 7, 14, and 28. So I could look at any stitch dictionary and pick out a motif in that number of stitches and know that as you're repeating it around, it would fit really nicely into those stitches. I know the first size and the third size both divide nicely by 8, 11, or 16. The larger sizes, it gets even easier because they're all divisible by 10. Um, so yeah, that's another consideration. Uh, if you've already knit a few vanilla sweaters and want to branch out and do something a little different, um, yeah, like I said, I think the pattern is fabulous just to have one in every color <laughs> as just a really wearable part of your wardrobe. But if you want to do a little extra playing there, um, that could give you some ideas. And the Ravelry group, um, or the, the pattern on Ravelry has some lovely projects where people have branched out from the original one color as well. Uh, so I, I think, um, yeah, the only other thing to say is that I'm practicing my color work on this gauge of yarn. Um, that's something I think I'll be asking all of you for some advice on in the group soon. Um, I tend to knit DK or worsted weight, especially garments and color work but uh, you all have me just so inspired with the fingering weight and these lovely patterns and yarns. This is more of a heavy fingering or light sport weight. And I just need to work on my techniques. I think because of the little bit of grippiness in this yarn, which is what makes it so fabulous for color work, um, because I hold both of the strands in my left hand, they're getting a little tangly and my color work just isn't quite as smooth. So something to keep practicing, even this tiny little bit of, you know, color work on the stripes. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm learning. So <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, eager to join in with the rest of you in the group and see you there and see your progress and um, to check in with you again on a future Shopcast. Thanks so much. Well, Kaylin is such a great addition to the show. I hope you enjoyed that segment. I really enjoyed watching Kaylin. And while I think of that, um, thank you so much for all your comments about Kelsey um, and her color wheel discussion um, that really resonated with uh, everyone and very, very helpful. So I'm glad that she did that for us on the show and she'll be with us next episode, I hope. Um, we did decide to start stocking the color wheels because it's a no-brainer. We should have had them all along, really, the amount of color work we do. So those will be in the shop. Just keep an eye out for them. Um, and, oh, so the giveaway. I forgot to tell our wonderful winner, Sarah Lussman, <laughs> to, win, to claim your prize, just send us an email with winner, all in capitals, in the subject line and email us at info at thewoollythistle.com and we'll get your prize out to you. You won a $25 gift certificate to the shop. And we're going to do another $25 gift, uh, gift certificate to the shop. And all you need to do is leave us a comment and we're going to ask you to think about all the things that are, com that are coming to the shop and that we're going to talk about today and tell us what excites you the most. Which of these things are you most excited about? Um, and if you do that, you'll be in the running. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and you'll be in, a running, in the running for mm. the prize. So now we're going to tell you what's new in the shop. There is so much to talk about. It's half the reason, along with caffeine, that I am talking so fast. <laughs> we don't want this show to be hours and hours long, but if it is, oh well. Um, it's all good stuff. So let's talk about what's in the shop right now. Um, I think we have quite a few pre-orders going on. So should we start with them? Yeah, let's okay. start with the pre-orders. So, so um, when you're watching this, the Shetland Bowl Week will be starting. That's what it yeah. is, um, which is uh, another virtual event. So check out, they might have some space for some classes left. Um, but we do have the Shetland Bowl Week Annual, which is um, their, well, it's their annual. And uh, it's got lots of great patterns, uh, essays, lovely things about Shetland. We actually have a teeny weeny wee ad in there too, which is nice. So um, support Shetland Will Week. They're having to do a virtual again, although they, they are doing a great job with their virtual mm -hmm. event. So that's exciting. So we have that. Um, I think that goes, I think that launches in October. We'll be shipping those out in October as soon as we get them. And of course, what just came out this week is Shetland Wool Adventure Journal number three. And we have a picture of that here. That is also a pre-order. That has a little longer pre-order. I think that goes live on November 7th, something like that. Right. But we are selling it and we're selling a lot of them. So um, get yours. And I think we might have one or two copies still in the shop from the previous issues. Really, uh, really great, great um, production from Misha there on Shetland. Um, also on pre-order and just gone live is Stripes by Vera Valamaki, published by Lina. We're excited about that. Do you want to tell them about the kit we put together for that? Yeah, there's some um, amazing patterns in there. And one of them is a lovely shawl knit in with lichen and lace. Mm -hmm. um, they're rustic sport. They're rustic sport. It has, I think, three colors and it has some brioche in it. It just looks really, really pretty. Yeah. Um, so we're offering a kit in the shop. As a pre-order as um, so well. As a pre-order. So if you pre-order both the book and the kit, you'll get both at the same time and yep. be able to just start knitting. Yep, exactly. And what's nice about that is that's being dyed to order for us. So we know it's going to be just beautiful. And we're just waiting for that to uh, come through. But also in Stripes, there are a couple of other uh, yarns that we stock uh, featured in the book, which is always really nice and special for mm -hmm. us. Yeah. Um, Blacker Lioness is in there in a beautiful blue and gray uh, top. I think it's a short sleeve, very I think floaty. It's the, cover. it's the cover. That's right. It's the cover. So we'll put a picture of that there. And does it also have Tuku? I think it, I has, think tuku. it has Tuku. So yeah. yeah, I think Tuku is in there as well. And um, yeah, so we're taking pre orders for Stripes by Vera Valamaki right now. And I think that's got quite a short launch date that's coming. It must be in the beginning of October somewhere. It'll October 12th. It does. Oh, okay. And it's October 12th. It just, it just came to me. <laughs> and the last pre-order we have right now uh, is just going on sale. And it's right in the middle there is Gudrun Johnson's mm -hmm. Shetland Trader, book three. And this really is um, a, a work of love from um, Gudrun. She's over, actually, she might be back home now, but she was just in Shetland uh, visiting her dad. 
Um, and this book is actually, I think, an homage to her mum, who was a Shetland designer back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And she's taken lots of pieces that her mum designed. Um, she actually was able to find some that people had collected and still had over there oh, in nice. Shetland that she might not have seen before. Um, and has put this beautiful book together, published by Pom Pom. And uh, that is going on pre-order. I think it went on pre-order yesterday when you mm -hmm. see this. So do go ahead and order that. Um, it's full of Jameson and Smith and um, a couple of other yarns as well. Stay tuned for uh, an interview with Gudrun about uh, Shetland Trader. We have that coming up right after this and I hope you enjoy that. Um, okay, what else do we have? We've got Lina 12. Uh, you can see that's no longer in pre-order. We have that and we will get that shipped out to you as soon as you place your order. Um, and Selbu Patterns by Anne Barsgaard. That is the follow-up book to Selbu Mittens. That's doing really, really well and we do have some of those in stock. And there we've got lovely, now this isn't Henrietta. Is this Henrietta? Because mine is Henrietta. Myrtle. Myrtle, little Myrtle here. Yeah. She's on her lonesome because Henrietta's off getting restuffed <laughs> <laughs> to make her look cuter because Myrtle is too cute and Henrietta just looks a little bit Frankenstein-y. So. We'll have Henrietta back for next time. Yeah, but I like her sitting on my shoulder there. <laughs> That's, That's cute. cute. Um, right, so let's talk about what else we've got in the shop. Oh, do you want to talk about Westchester spinners? I do. Yeah. Let's do that right here behind me. So let's pull them out. This is this year's colorways. Yeah, I really like this one. Yeah, um, it's cute. I'm having a tough time staying monogamous with my sweater, and right now this is the <laughs> other sweaters are tempting. The one you're me, cheating on? No, I haven't haven't yet. I've been resisted. Oh. <laughs> I've been a good girl. <laughs> um, but this is this year's Christmas sock yarn, vintage tinsel. You can see all that lovely sparkle. Yeah. Um, and it's soft. Don't worry yeah, about the sparkle it, making it scratchy or something. No, it's soft. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely. It's really soft. Yeah. I don't know what they use, but it's very soft. Um, and then blueberry bonbon is the coordinating color. If you want to do coordinating um, toes or heels, um, it does. It goes really well. It does go really well. It's perfectly matched. There is a pattern from Winnick Mum again uh, for this, and I think it's all in this. So you could knit the entire sock out of that. But if you want to stretch your sock yarn and get a couple of pairs, then I would do heels and toes in that and yeah. cuffs even. So that's this year's colorway. Vintage Tinsel is selling really well. And we did get in because West Yorkshire Spinners is releasing um, Christmas is past. So here we have Candy Cane, which is a red, white, and or cream, red, cream, and green um, Candy Cane stripe. And we've got... The green is chocolate lime. Yep. I think that goes really well with It does. That. That's my preference with candy So candy. elfish. So you can do whatever you want. Yes. <laughs> Um, the cherry drop, it still goes, but it's not, I think it's the not, green is better. I think the cayenne pepper, it goes with the red in here better. Yeah. yeah. That's what I would do. Yeah. Um, and then we've got fairy lights. Now this, at the time of recording, is not in stock, but we have it coming. So keep your eyes peeled for that. This is from a couple of years ago and it's got sparkle in it, which I don't know if it did the time before. I think it did. Did it? I mean, it would make sense because they're sparkly. And again, that goes with the green, and I would say cayenne pepper as well with that. Yeah. Oh, look at that. It yes, they saw, I was going to hold it because it also goes with that. Mm -hmm. like yeah. It's one of the reds in there. But that is So really the, nice. the cherry pop, it goes well with all of them. Yep. But it does, it goes really nice with the, if you're not a blue person, right? it goes really nice. And um, this one always does really well. This is Hollyberry. It's sort of, it's not sparkly. It's kind of... Um, a little muted in the colors, not bright and brassy, but you know, a little bit more sophisticated and really nice. And that goes with it this go red. With cherry drop. Yep. Really nice. Mm. And then lastly was last year's colorway. We got more of this. This is Starry Night or what is this called? Silent Night. Silent Night. And it's got the tinsel in it. And uh, it goes with this blue, which is Juniper. Mm -hmm. Very, Very nice. nice. Yeah, so we have all of these. Fairy lights will be in soon enough. Uh, these are really fun to knit. Um, West Yorkshire Spinners uh, yarn. Let's show this year's. West Yorkshire Spinners yarn has um, a very high, well, it's all British wool, first of all, and it's got nylon in it to give it strength. Uh, it's got a huge amount of blue-faced Leicester in it, which makes it 
a really nice uh, soft yarn and strong yarn as well. This stuff wears like iron, it really does. And it's soft on your hands to knit. And do you want to share? I do. What I you do. Oh, by the way, the fumes coming off of this yarn. <laughs> Such good <laughs> wool fumes. Um, so a couple years ago, a couple, we'll just say a couple. I don't know how many it was. Um, I knit. I mentioned them last time. I love your responses to them. I will wear them. I'm just not wearing them today. But I knit some knee-high candy cane sock yarn uh, or socks. Um, so I do have both of them. There are the blockers in there to help them hold oh, their shape, but... Um, isn't that great? I love them. You have to wear a cute little skirt and... Yeah. I have a black skirt. I think I can work something out. Uh, you will see it. It is coming. Oh my God, um, it goes with this green shirt. It does. Uh, it does. I have a black dress that I've worn before too. It's like a dark gray black. Um, and I could totally wear these with it. I will look slightly ridiculous, but if not here, where? <laughs> if you can't do it here, that's right. And in front of thousands of people, but don't worry so about that. So I have my, my foot, I'm a six and a half. So I'm a average size, average to small. I don't yeah. know. Um, that's pretty small. I, and I used, I want to say milk bottle. Yeah. For the, um, contrast color and the heels. Toes, I just did regular. Uh-huh. Um, and I still fun. have leftover candy cane yarn. This is one ball of yarn? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. So, 100 gram ball did all that. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, I don't have a ton left over, but I've got left over. I, I was not playing yarn chicken. It's kind of amazing. What pattern did you follow or did you make this up? Um, I didn't make it up. I tend to use, I used a fish lips kiss heel on this one. Um, I just cast on a toe up. Uh -huh. um, I actually really like cuff down. Yeah, I do partial, too. But yeah. I knew I wanted to get knee yeah. eyes and go as much as I could. So, so did, did you just increase up. occasionally or? So yeah, I started increasing. Like I just kind of would try it on and go, oh, about here, I need to increase. Brilliant. Um, and so you can see the increases on the back. Um, I can show you. Like you can definitely see that they're there. I tried to do them like at the end of a row. Mm -hmm. Um. So That's that they wouldn't clever. be right, you know, in, yeah. interrupt the pattern. But right. No, yeah, very fair. invisible, really. And I, I did them sort of like on each side of like uh, here. So, you so went it on. had one there and then one there. So it kind of hugs your calf a little bit. Nice. Do they stay um, up? They do stay up. Wow. Um, so Absolutely awesome and fun. And I can't wait <laughs> to show you her wearing them. <laughs> it's coming. I'll, I'll do it. So that's candy cane, but you could use any of them. Any of them. They're they're very yardage is very generous. Yep. Yep. All right. So we got West Georgia spinners. We did open up the Star Cardi, which is just peeking out here. Oh, oh, I went oh. the wrong way. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> there we go. The Star Cardi. You know the Star Cardi. Um, we have opened up um, the yarn that's eligible for you to get the pattern for free. And that would be $85 of any Jameson and Smith yarn, including cones, which I think we'll have back in soon. If you want a cone beyond that, they always go really fast. Mm -hmm. Anyway, $85 Jameson and Smith yarn in Heritage, Supreme, two ply, cones, balls, whatever. And you can um, elect to get the pattern for free. We're doing that because we are not able to get enough of the color that, um, that these are knitted in, the blue or the gray. It's just, it's not possible. Um, we're still dealing with COVID and all of that, so we're making we're making lemons out of lemonade, or no, we're making lemonade out of lemons. <laughs> caught myself, and um, that so would be amazing. I know. <laughs> so just you know, um, see what you can do with what we have, and uh, maybe get the pattern for free, so that when things do get back to normal, you can order your yarn for that particular project. Then that's always a way to go about it too. There are some projects, some star parties being knit. Um, there are. In the Facebook group, and it's so fun to see the different color com combinations and see them come together. Yeah, and you know, knitting, and you know this now, knitting an all-over sweater in color work is not that difficult. It really isn't. You know, if you've got a good pattern to follow, yeah. um, it's just, it's a lot of it, but you get into a rhythm and a groove, and it's so Moorish. Well, you know that, right? You just want to knit, knit, yeah. knit. Um, it's very gratifying as you're watching it come to life on your needles. So what else do we have going on right now? Um, you're an Adelic. Ooh. You're an Adelic. Let's talk about this. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Maggie put this together for us. Yes. And it's heavy. 
It's beautiful. So let's talk about this. Yarnadelic is John Arbin's latest yarn and we are now stocking it, which is super exciting. So here is Yarnadelic. There is their label. And there's a whole story as to how this yarn came to be. But let's say, uh, basically, uh, John Arbin is a huge, huge music fan. And they had a few nights sitting around playing records, drinking wine and coming up with this range, which is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. It's 100% Falkland Corydale and it is soft and shiny and silky. It's lovely. Um, of course, it's worsted spun coming from John Arbin. And these are 100 gram skeins made in the UK, of course, 333 meters. I think that's probably going to be 370 yards thereabouts. And uh, this is a heavy fingering slash sport weight weight, which is great. And this one I'm showing you is Sunflowers in My Garden colorway. What do you have? I have, I have Woman in Blue. I love this color. Mm -hmm. It's this very pretty. Dyed on gray, it looks like. Yeah, so you can see it's very heathered. I mm -hmm. love the depth of shade that he gets. Yeah, well, I think so. because he does all the tops and everything, it's dyed in the wool mm -hmm. and then it's um, all mixed together to their yeah. own recipe, which is nice. Um, then we've got, I don't think this one is dyed, Ordinary Joe, my color. Yeah. And this is a gray, but it's sort of an oatmeal-y taupe gray, which is really warm and nice. Um, here, I don't know if we want to, that one. Okay. Down. This one is the beautiful ones. This one, I'm going to scooch a little closer. Oh yeah. Um, so this one, it's a creamy base, but you can see all those mm -hmm. colors in there. Yellows, a little bit of like purples mm -hmm. and pink. It's so pretty. Really, really lovely. The beautiful ones. That would be a fun to knit, a uh, fun one to knit on your needles. It would. Uh, then we've got Galata Guitar. I don't know, these are very rolling off of me. Which is a nice warm brown. Chestnutty brown. Pretty. This one is of my hands. I really like this deep teal. Yeah. Lovely. This one is Pink Moon. Um, and it is, this one's a peachy pink. Um, really nice. That is nice. Les Fleurs is um, full of color, kind of a brick, well, kind of a red, but there's there's blue in there too. Very nice. Yeah. Um, indigo Dust. Um, Amazing. Yeah, definitely. You can see the heathering on the dark. Mm -hmm. um, it's really pretty. Gorgeous. And that one? I think that one. Um, this one is body da, mm -hmm. and that one you can see there's you know flecks of bronze, and blue. Yeah, really pretty. Show it with this one too. Mm -hmm. Maybe the other blue. Yeah, they all all his colors coordinate really well. That's one of the nice things about getting mm -hmm. try matching coordinating yarns from a single dyer is um, they they do his colors go really well and there's that one too they do so yeah we have 10 colors oh and then it's these so two pretty. as well yeah like that oh I know so yeah this is a beautiful big basket of loveliness and yeah. so this is on sale um now mm -hmm. I think yes it, yeah. it went on sale earlier this week so Hopefully, if you're interested in that, you have been able to get some. I think this would be like make an amazing striped sweater. Mm -hmm. just, just, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. So good. So, so good. And, and if you're not sure, it's really, it's soft. Oh, yeah. Um, I think Corydale easily next to skin. Absolutely. Hats, cowls. And it's um, worsted spun too, which just makes it a little bit smoother as well. Yeah. But, yeah, for sure. Yeah, very much. Yeah. I think this would be very easy to wear. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, really um, what else do we have? New today with us is a very special yarn. It is Blacker's birthday yarn. This year it's called Woodland. Um, available in a DK and a four ply. Um, for just to be clear, four ply is the term um, 
for fingering weight for the same thing. That's right. We, we, we say four ply all the time because we're selling British yarns most of the time and they say four ply, but it's the, we use it interchangeably with fingering. Yeah. And so, yeah, this is available in a fingering weight and a DK weight. Yes. And Woodland is a combination of BFL, White Shetland, and they added a drop of Black Welsh Mountain, which yes. gives a little depth and um, depth of shade and heathering. You can really see it in this green one. They had me at Black Welsh Mountain. I think that's one of my favorite yarns, although I love really dark brown, chocolatey, dark bitter brown yarn uh, wool. And of course, the Black Welsh Mountain is that. So putting that in there is very special. You don't mm -hmm. see Black Welsh Mountain that much. So it's mm -hmm. it's a lovely yarn. It's um, It feels bouncy, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Very springy. Yep. So this is going, or this is on sale by the time you're watching this, or it will be going on sale because... This is the launch This day. is the launch day. So yeah. it will be on sale at some point today, if not already, by the time you're seeing this. Um, be sure to be on our newsletter list um, mm -hmm. for future launches <laughs> yes. because the newsletter will have already gone out by the time you see this. Yeah. Um, we, we never are able to get very much of this. It's a limited run for Blacker always, and so we just get a little bit of it. But we are happy to share it with you. And it comes in seven shades plus a natural. So let's yeah. show them. So those. I like showing these together. Mm -hmm. So there's three greens. You could do a lovely gradient with these. Mm -hmm. The lightest is called Lichen. Mm -hmm. um, I already showed that one, but it's really pretty. And you've got the medium one is Clover. And then the darker one is called Hollybush. Which is lovely. That it's a holly green. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. their theme this year is woodland. So they've definitely yeah. brought that in with these Ooh, colors. So squishy. You have the undyed, which they call Silver Falls, but this is the natural undyed. Yeah. And you can really see all the, mm -hmm. the Black Welsh Mountain in there. Yeah. And it really is it's has. just a drop to sort of deepen the color sure. and you can actually see the you can see the hairs of it there. Which you know, I love that. That just gives it character. I don't know if it's picking up or not, but it's in there. Believe me. Yeah. yeah. I will say it doesn't like, I know you can see the hairs. It doesn't feel prickly at all. Like it's, no. it's very soft in the yeah. hand. I, yeah. I think I'd be able to wear it easily for a hat or a cowl. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And then there's copper wood. Um, Is that the DK you're holding up? Yeah, I'm holding the DK. Do we have a DK and a fingering? I think this is... Yeah, so that's okay, the Okay, so let's turn them that way. Now you can see. So there we go. So DK over here and fingering over here. Yeah. Yeah. Really nice. And this color you said is copper wood. Yeah. Really pretty. It looks like a nice round. It yarn. really does. I wonder if it's a three-ply. I'm not sure, but I bet you... I don't know. It could just be too, like, that the... The bounce you get. Yeah, from the blend of the yarns. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then this lovely blue shade. I say lovely too much, but frost. We all do. It is it is lovely. It is lovely. <laughs> um don't and you fight can it. See the heathering in that. Yeah. It's really pretty. Yeah. Um pretty blue. Like that one. And then I'm just gonna show them all off. Yep. And <laughs> you go for it, girl. Um, and then the two purples or mauves, pinks, purples. Mauvies? Yeah, there we go. Um, you've got Rosewood as the lighter one. <sighs> I know. That's your gem right there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then, let's see, Forest Berry. Forest Berry. Great yeah. name. Yeah. Yeah, so seven colors plus the natural gray available in fingering weight and DK. And a very special blend for Blacker's birthday. This. Yeah. This that's the four five. I'm just keeping them separate. Keeping them separate. I'm trying to stay hard. Keeping them separate. Despite my I best efforts. To, I wanted to show them all. I wanted to do like oh. to show them all. There you go. Yeah. Really pretty. So once these are gone, I don't know if we'll be able to get more. So. No, I know. Usually we don't, I have yeah. to say. Okay, back in the shop and we've been waiting ages for this for the yarn to um, be available. We have the lovely the Crofters prep kits back in the shop. Which is very timely considering Shetland Wool Week yeah. is just starting. This is this year's. And so this is the Jameson and Smith selection. So we have those in the shop. You get a lovely, really nice tote bag, <clears throat> which is quite sizable actually. It's got a gusset at the bottom. Yeah. Yep. Super nice. 
So those are back in the shop I'm now. Snag one of these. Yeah. So now let's talk about what's coming to the shop and have your eyes peeled and your ears up because we seem to be going through a spurt of lots of things coming down the pike, which is really fun mm -hmm. and really enjoyable. And remember to be in the running for this uh, week's giveaway. Tell us what you're most excited about that we're talking about today. We really do want to know. But coming, we have a very big announcement um, that Marie Wallen's book Cherish will be going live on October 1st. And we are super duper excited about this book. It is a book of 12 designs, reimagined from previous designs. Well, you might recognize some of them, you really can't because she's uh, reworked all the color work and also the, the um, maybe the construction of the sweater has changed in some cases too. Uh, mostly color work and a couple of beautiful lace and cable things thrown in there too. We're very excited. We're hoping for a lovely big stock up of yarn and we are hoping to offer kits but you'll have to wait and see which kits we end up going with because it's very difficult to choose but we have a picture of the cover here and um yeah super duper excited we think you'll love it too and of course it's her british breeds which is her own yarn which is spun up at john arban um and that's up to 20 colors now so just fantastic so that is coming very soon be on our newsletter list if you want to be the first to know anything about that including kits and all that kind of stuff also coming back to the woolly thistle, though it's been a very long time, it's like it's coming back really for the first time, and that is Retrosaria. We're so excited to have Mondom. <laughs> and really what excited. are the other yarns we're getting? Um, Mondom, Pegalol, Pegalol, and, and Brusca. Brusca. Yeah, so we're getting three different yarns. We're getting a bunch of colors. Super excited about this. So happy to be working with them. Yeah. Um, and that will be in the shop as soon as it gets here as well. And did you see that they uh, moved into their own shop premises it on so pretty oh my dream shop we one a, day we one day we do need a field trip to <laughs> portugal <laughs> so yeah if you you probably have heard of retrosaria rosa pomar they are out of portugal and they have very woolly wool from their native portuguese sheep there which is really why why i love them it's it's like what we do here so that's really exciting um also coming uh we have a chop up of uist wool i think in their dk and or four ply weights i'm not exactly sure i remember exactly what we needed yeah. but uh we will have that and that will go in the shop as soon as we can and the only other thing that i mentioned uh is the color wheel cards we will have these lovely color wheels so that we can all become uh, really uh, expert at picking colors though you know we we always want to tell you if you have questions or you want to see things together um that you're not sure about we are always happy to help with that yeah um, we're happy to either you know guide you or even just send pictures mm -hmm. yeah um, whatever you need that's really helpful yeah yeah for sure for sure so i think that's everything just make sure that um you are on our newsletter list for future uh, launches that is the best way to hear from us and also um, be sure to look out for that Yarnadelic that went on sale mm -hmm. and make sure you um, caught the black, uh, black, Blacker Yarns birthday <laughs> yarn. I will get that out. The Blacker Yarns birthday yarn. Uh, make sure you caught that, which is going live today, if that is of interest to you. I'm sure there's many of you out there who have collected from every year um, because it's such a special yarn. So now we are going to take you into my conversation with Gudrun Johnson about her new book, The Shetland Trader 3, um, where she tells us all about her process for this book and working with her mother's designs. So I think we will be away now. So just thanks very much for watching. Enjoy the interview with Gudrun. Leave us a comment so that we know um, what you really like about today's episode uh, in terms of what we were showing you. And we will see you in a couple of weeks. So thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Wait, and if you go out, take your knitting. <laughs> I always forget that now. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm really happy to have Gudrun Johnson here of Shetland, although you're an American transplant as well. Gudrun, is that right? Yes, I have dual citizenship. So um, still got my UK passport. Um. <laughs> Lucky you. I don't even have that. I'm, I'm, a, I'm all United States now. But where do you live? Where, where are you located? Um, I'm currently living in Reno, Nevada. Okay, yeah. 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 And uh, you were in Massachusetts a while back as well, so you've been moving around. Yeah. Yes, yes. We've moved a lot, you know, and lived um, 
in the UK as well, you know, at um, in Scotland, um, Edinburgh, and spent some time in Shetland as well, um, you know, over the years of yeah. being married to my American husband. Um, right. So the kids have dual citizenship too, so they That's right. that makes it easy for them to go and visit and yeah. spend time there. I've always I've always enjoyed seeing your kids on your social media account, and they're off and away now, right? Even your son's at college now. Yeah, he is, although he's currently home right now. Um, I mean, like everybody, he's had a strange, you know, um, pandemic college experience. And actually he was, he'd been trying to do study abroad and he was in Spain when the pandemic hit. So he got sent home. Uh He was hoping to go back to Spain this semester, um, but he can't because it's at level four and his university won't allow that. So he's currently kind of doing things online, which allows him to float around a bit. so he's actually, we're both going to Shetland together in a few days. Oh, um, so he's going to come with me because um, he hasn't been back for four years. So Oh, wow. So yeah, yeah, tell us about that. You're going home, going back to Shetland for a wee while. How long are you I am. For? Um, I'm going for just over two weeks. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, usually I run, you know, I go to Shetland every summer because I run these trips with Mary Jane Mucklestone where we take groups of knitters. So I usually get to spend, you know, weeks um, yeah. every summer in Shetland um and so yeah it's been two years since I've been back um and it was a bit of a spur of the moment decision also partly because you know the wildfires out here have been bad the heat's been bad I can't really deal with um the heat (laughs) um, to this extent Um, and I just thought you know the things have opened up a bit more in the UK in terms of traveling there um that I should just go for it and you know be very super careful obviously and all of that um so I'll mostly be up in Shetland um during that time and and it's a chance for me to also kind of you know reconnect with this journey with my book coming out and you know um I'm going to do uh, something in conjunction with Wool Week there um which will get recorded for their virtual event um, as well yeah well let's talk about your book I have a copy here of this beautiful Shetland Trader book and I think the first thing to talk about is the name, the Shetland Trader, because I know that's very, um, that's a historical and uh, very personal thing to you. So tell us about that. Yeah, so the Shetland Trader was the name of um, the business that my mum ran um, mm-hmm. in the 70s in Shetland. Um, and her business was all sort of mail order, you know, um, knitwear. So the pieces would be knit up by local knitters. Um, People would place their orders. They would get a brochure. They could, you know, um, they could specify some, you know, specific things to them, you know, customize it and things like that. Um, And my parents, so this was like, I mean, early, early 1970s. Um, So just before I was born, she sort of began this business and, um, they my parents were thinking of what to call it and and apparently they were like you know down by the pier I think in Lerwick and there was a boat there called the Shetland Trader Um, and they thought that's you know was a good name for the business and I I really really like it just because of that notion of the trading of ideas and you know traditions and and especially for me because I don't live in Shetland right now like being able to be here and sort of have that connection and the way that, yes, yeah. I'm continuing to share, you know, um, the traditions of Shetland and my own take on it and all of that. Um, so when I first got into, um, the very first thing I had published was on Nitty.com, and this would have been something like 2006 or seven, I think. Um, and Amy Singer um, said to me, well, you know, do you have a blog? And I didn't have a, I didn't have a knitting blog at the time. We had a family blog. And um, so she's like, well, you'll need a blog because people will want to know more about you. And um, so then I was like, okay, what do I call this, this blog? And it was at that point that I was like, oh, I'll call it the Shetland Trader. You know, the business hadn't, you know, been um, running obviously for a long time prior to that. Um, so yeah, that felt like a natural fit and that's just kind of obviously become, you know, my, my business sort of name. Yeah. Yeah. And your mum was also a designer. So she got local people to help knit all these, but she was actually designing the pieces, right? She was. Yeah. I mean, she wasn't from Shetland. So, um, when my parents moved there in the sixties, after they got married, they were there for 13 years and, um, we were all born there. There's four kids in my family and, um, and my mum, you know, developed an interest I mean really just from like 
you know, next door neighbor um, and one woman in particular who was a bit of a surrogate granny um, to my older siblings at the time who were very small. And so she, my mom asked her to make things for um, for my older siblings. Yeah. And, and she would sort of specify, you know, oh, could you do this? Can you add that or use this color, that kind of thing. Um, and this was sort of the era of um, cloth kits. I don't know if you know that and just sort of, you know, very 70s fashion. And my mum was very fashionable. Like yeah. people yeah. remember her kind of in Shetland because of how sort of fashionable she was and stood yeah. out. Um, and so really that is kind of how her business began. Um, it was really just, you know, requesting things for her own children. Yeah. Um, and then friends saw those and they were like, oh, could you know, could you get some made for our kids? And it kind of grew out of that. Yeah. Um, and then she moved into d designing for adults. And um, she actually, she went to the Shetland Museum and saw, um, you know, some of the old pieces there. And there was one sweater in particular, which um, I don't know how well you can see in the background there, yeah. but um, it was an adult sweater and it was very worn, but it had the very traditional, um, you know, the Piri motifs, um, but also the very traditional colors that mm -hmm. were used. Um, and it, she was really kind of struck by that because she felt like she wasn't seeing that being worn or knit at that point in Shetland. Yeah. You know, it was more of the sort of the yoke sweaters with the yeah. larger Scandinavian designs. Um, and often brighter colors. Right. And um, so she she started to kind of bring that aesthetic back into what she was designing. Yeah. Um, and again, yes, you know, a lot of the silhouettes she was coming up with, you know, were again, the 70s style, the sort yeah. of maxi dress things. And the, I mean, this sweater here, you can see, you know, the bell, yes. the balloon sleeves, the turtlenecks, yeah. you know, yeah. just all of this kind of stuff. And it just, I mean, I don't think she at all anticipated how successful it would be. Um, and my my dad always says that, you know, like they they weren't very sort of business savvy in that sense of like realizing kind of what was happening. And they were also raising four kids. My dad was renovating a croft at the time, you know, from a ruin. Like, yeah. And so um, it was it was a busy time. But um, yeah, my mum was very creative um in terms of yes coming up with these silhouettes and the colors um and then passing that kind of on to the knitters and obviously as you know like the knitters in Shetland would also bring their own creativity to right. these things you know because they would yeah they would be picking the color palettes you know to a certain extent too um so patterns were never written for them I'm sure some of her regular knitters had notes because they would have been making some of the same things yeah um and then everything that was plain stocking net was done on a machine okay. so uh, so those you know especially for those like maxi dress things yeah. you know, that she had and um, there was a lot of plain stocking yeah. net in those and, and that was done on a machine yeah um, because because uh, machine knitters I mean they worked in their home they would have a yeah. machine in their home that they could just knit these up with Exactly. So it, wasn't, it wasn't some big industrial uh, no. project. It was in the home still. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there were several other people who were sort of establishing kind of cottage industries and stuff like that. At the same time, people who still do it, like Wilma Malcolmson, yeah. you know, um, so she remembers my mum and um, yeah. And like I said, she had, you know, local knitters um, that she paid. I heard, you know, I've heard from people that she paid a very good rate, you know, to the knitters <laughs> as well. And um, it's important. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So the premise of this book, then, um, I can see that that's the cover design right there. Yeah. That's beautiful. Maybe you can show us around this, but also what, you know, how many patterns in, are in here and um, what the premise is, which is basically taking your mom's designs and yeah. making them more contemporary for today. Is that fair to say? It's, yeah, I think it's a mixture um, of, so for some of the, she had a lot of different designs. So she had, you know, kids stuff. She had lots of different adult stuff. Um, and, you know, the business, my mom sold the business to somebody else, um, I think in like 70, must have been seven, 1977 or so when my parents left Shetland. Mm -hmm. um, so another woman owned it for a brief period of time. I'm not entirely sure how long. I did try to get in touch with her, but, you know, wasn't able to. And um, I know she had a, 
she moved to Edinburgh or something. There was an actual Shetland Trader store in Edinburgh at some point, I have been told. Um, yeah, so my mum didn't have a lot of these um, more unique pieces um, from her designing days. She had kept um, some of the kids stuff, but not these pieces. So I only really knew these from looking at the images that she had, the photos and from the brochures and things like that. Um, and obviously, you know, I was aware of the fact that she ran this business, you know, but I was very small when she did. I mean, it was before I was born and then a baby, a toddler time. Um, so it wasn't really something that I knew that much about or or particularly asked her about, you know, as you don't kind of growing up. And it wasn't yeah. until I got into knitwear design that, you know, I was making that connection. Um, unfortunately, at the same time that I was getting into knitwear design, my mum was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And um, so, you know, it got worse and worse in terms of like being able to have a kind of, you know, um, in-depth conversation about that time that, you know, yeah. her running the business. Uh, and she passed away in 2017. So um, this project has obviously been a very personal thing for me to, to work on and for the whole family, to be honest, like it's been really nice to, um, yeah, to create this collection and and in the book you know I also do um, include a fair amount of text you know just talking about my mum's time running the business and just kind of how what my approach was um, to doing this collection um, so yes it is all based on you know knitwear that she designed um, and some of the pieces are you know pretty much exact replicas um, like this sweater yeah did you have to do some detective work then if you didn't have the actual pieces you were sort of piecing it together from your own knowledge yeah exactly um for some of the things but for for this particular sweater mm -hmm. I think it was 2014 um around about then that I was in Shetland for wool week and um actually I, we had a group of knitters Mary Jane um and I and um it was through my brother, my older brother drives the minibus for us on our trips in Shetland. And um, so he was there too. And he, he said to me that a friend of his had seen on Facebook that um, Wendy Inkster, who um, has the Borough Bears um, yes. business in yeah. Shetland, had two of mum's sweaters. And it was, it was this one and another version of it. Yeah. Um, and apparently, you know, she would put up a picture and there was a caption that was said something like, you know, too nice to cut up because she yes, cuts up sweaters to repurpose for her bears. <laughs> and so, you know, I had never seen these sweaters in person. And obviously the notion that she was about to cut them up, I said to my dad, we have to go there now, like <laughs> drive to her studio right now. Because, oh, my gosh. Um, and we get there and she know she didn't have any intention of cutting them up um, yeah. she'd actually had them for a while she bought them at a sale somewhere yeah. in Shetland at some yeah. point um, and she has a big you know vintage collection and she knew of the Shetland trader business and you know she knew how special they were and all that um, and she gave them to me so um that was really you know that was kind of the moment where yeah. I had you know been thinking about all these amazing designs that my mom had done but that was the moment I was like I have to do something yes. with these, you know, I, I knew their patterns had never been written for them. Right. Um, I knew that they would be of appeal to people yeah. still, you know, like um, there's a certain timeless quality about some of those yeah. pieces. Yes. And so it was really at that moment. Um, and I have, so this is the, you know, how well you can see, this is the yeah. original one. The, this one here. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, this is the recreated one. And this okay. is, this is, this is you know, oh this is the one oh my god this is the original one that I got from Wendy um yeah. and I think should be yeah so the original label oh, um, the oh, label is in there um, I, love it. I love it and what I really like about this is she's combining lace and color work in the same exactly piece. yeah which is very one. unusual yeah. um yeah but works really well and um yeah, I mean, I would say that th that this particular sweater is kind of like um, the most iconic and original kind of, you know, piece yeah. um, in many ways um, because of things like that, combining those elements. Right. Um, so I took, I had, there's another sweater, you know, same style, but just different colors. And yeah. um, so I took both of those to Jameson and Smith and to Ella Gordon, you yeah. know, who's obviously also into her vintage knitwear. She yeah. was 
um, very keen to see them. And, you know, she immediately matched up the colors. Right. And, you know, for this sweater, they were exactly the same. I mean, they, they had all the colors. And um, so I left Shetland kind of going, OK, <clears throat> this I need to do this. Yeah. And that was sort of I didn't entirely know how many pieces I would have, you know, in the collection or how I would approach it all, because um, yes, I had these sweaters to work from, but again, there were pieces that, yes, I, I didn't see right. um, in person. So, um, so yeah, it was a bit of kind of looking, you know, at photos and then also figuring out because some of the elements of the sweaters were um, you know, knit on a machine, um, mm -hmm. as we mentioned, um, figuring out, okay, well, what, we, what would my approach be as a hand knitter to right. creating this shape, you know? Um, so yeah, that was really fun. And, and, and I did start with this sweater because I had it, you know, yeah. um, to hand and, you know, I got gauge on it straight away. And um, I basically did, you know, use exactly the same sort of motifs and colors. And So the original one that your mum had made was that with Jameson and Smith then for the colors to match up so well? Do you know? I think it probably was. I know she did get wool from them. And she also, I mean, I think she used wool from everybody, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think she also got it. My dad remembers going to get wool fr from Lawrence Odie, actually, huh. um, in Hosick. Um, so, yeah, so I think she kind of used, yeah. used everybody. And for the book, I chose to use both Jameson and Smith and Jameson's. Right. So um, there are basically two samples of every design, um, one in each of their yarns. Um, and also because we had two different models, you know, um, for the photo shoot. So there's different That's sizes. Um, and yeah, so I think there's probably about 10 designs in total in the book. And I would say that maybe three or four of them are kind of exact replicas. Mm -hmm. But what I wanted to include, which is also kind of something that the, my mum offered in her um, mail order business is some choices for the knitter because not everybody wants a turtleneck right. or a balloon sleeve. So there are, for this sweater, you know, there's a straight sleeve option. Yeah. There's a crew neck option, right. you know, um, so that people can kind of, yeah, pick and yeah. choose a bit, the elements. And that was true of her business too. In her brochures, it would kind of say, you know, you check whether you want a polo neck or, right. you know, right. or you That's want a particular, right. if you want something to be a bit longer. I know that there was a lot of um, individual customization that people asked for. Yeah. And, you know, again, because of the sort of flexibility of the knitter, um, etc. like they were able to do that. They could accommodate saying, okay, yeah, I'll add a pocket to this or, or whatever, you know, yeah. it was. Um, did, so I wanted to- Did, did your mum have just a palette of colors that she had made or did she allow people to choose colors? And She gave um, options, I think, you know, again, um, within the brochure, it would sort of, you know, it was primarily focusing on fairly natural shades, yep. most of her stuff, mm -hmm. um, especially once the business got more established. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm sure that, again, if somebody said, oh, I really, really want to have right. green in this or something yeah. like that, then yes, that, that would be accommodated. And, um, you know, and over the years of sort of, of me doing my trips to Shetland, but also my parents retired there um, probably about 15 years ago, right around the time that I was starting to get into knitwear design. Right. So, you know, over these years of going back and, and in more recent years in particular, um, friends of my parents who bought items of my mum's, you know, during the time that she ran the business, they kept them. And so, you know, I've also been able to sort of visit those friends in Shetland and they were like, oh, look, you know, we bought this for our kids and they still have it. And, you know, so and also pieces popping up in the museums or at exhibitions that, again, I'm like, I've never seen that before. Yeah. And um, so that's been a really kind of rewarding process yeah. and kind of exciting you know it's like I feel like every time I go there's a new thing that I haven't seen or someone yeah. pulls out of their you know storage or, or whatever amazing. that's yeah. really amazing I mean yeah just to keep finding these things or have them pop up or have them in a museum I mean that's just amazing yeah it is it that's is wonderful. yeah um do you want to tell us about some of the other pieces in the book yeah so um so there's this sweater and then um one of the other pieces that um i did do sort of again another sort of 
you know, pretty much a re replication of this particular design is um, a smock. See how much I can fit into the frame here. Yeah. Um, so I love this. this. <laughs> Small, it's adorable dress thing, you know, with a little bib of yeah. fair isle here and the pockets. Yeah. And um, so that piece, uh, again, I had never seen it in person, but it did pop up at an exhibition on Wolsey. Um, it was like fair isle knitting through the decades, and yeah. somebody, you know, submitted that piece. It it's slightly different from that one, but yeah. again. I had photos of that smock. And um, so for that one, I did also kind of pretty much recreate it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, looking at photos um, and I decided for that one to offer it in two lengths. So there's one that's like, you know, a slightly more tunic kind of length and one that's could be more of a dress length. Uh, but that was sort of the only kind of change I made for that piece. Do you know off the top of your head what gauge? That is it. I'm just thinking for hand knitters who might think, oh, to knit a whole dress. But I have actually done that with one of your designs. So yeah, well, I know <laughs> that's the thing. Like, because my mom had these like floor length dresses and things like that, I was like, OK, well, probably <laughs> a lot of people are not going to knit that. So um, for the tunic, I feel like it's manageable. And I had designed other dresses and yes. people have knit them. So I'm like, OK, people yes, definitely people are OK them. with knitting that much plain stocking knit. Um, and then I did also design, um, this is where I kind of, you know, took some elements of my mum's design, but, you know, modified things a bit. So there are a couple of dresses, yeah. but they're not floor length, right. you know, um, so they're sort of, yeah, a more, um, more like a knee length, you know, or just above knee. Um, so there's a couple of those in the book. The gauge I forget for, I know for the feral portions, it's like 27 stitches and yeah 30, 30 something rows in the fair isle on a that for me is on a us four needle okay um i mean i've yeah so i'm i'm sure it's um it's not as tight as that in just the regular stockinette there's going to be some drape there i know that yeah. i love how mine uh lands as well so right right yeah so there's that there was um there's a tank top yeah, um, I love this. That's so pretty. So for this one, um, this was again sort of detective work. There were some photos, um, and I wish actually I had brought that photo with me, but there was a photo of um, a floor length, like skirt type thing um, with a balloon sleeve sweater and like a tank on top. Mm -hmm. But I thought, looking at that picture, I thought the whole thing was just like one dress, yeah. like one piece. Um, but then on reading the descriptions um, that my mum had for the pieces in the brochure and stuff like that, I realised that it was actually three separate pieces. So it was a skirt and it was a tank and it was a, um, a sweater underneath. So, um, you know, the tank was definitely a sort of a scoop neck, um, kind of more fitted um and had you know different fair isle designs on it that you know i couldn't see super close up so for for this particular piece um you know i ended up just sort of using um a motif that i had used on something else yeah um and putting that in there and then there's kind of like a, a regular you know zigzag pattern yeah. in between so um so so again yeah that's kind of one where i took um inspiration got, yes and it's got that neckline that I think would uh echo the 70s right so yeah exactly it's more of a scoop neck yeah um, and it's just an i-cord bind off I around that, yeah here. I really like it really love yeah. that. yeah um so there's that and then um for the accessories in the book mm -hmm. um my mum again you know she had lots of hats and and some of the sort of more you know traditional looking well she had hats actually yeah. And I see this lovely wee thing. Yes. So, and that, that, that was another thing that um, photos of my mum when she was running the business um, and living in Shetland. And I think inside the book here, we'll be able to see that picture. That's pretty good. Yeah. So in that photo, she's wearing a headscarf. So she often had, you know, this knitted lace headscarf and, um, so I want to include that, you know, yeah. in the book as well as an option. Love and it's just, you. you know, worked as a, a sort of modern hat would be, you know, where you're starting with one stitch and increasing. Yeah. 
you can make it bigger if you want mm -hmm. a bigger you know yeah headscarf or whatever um and then, and then she also yeah this is lovely really pretty sort of a crescent shape is it that one is a crescent shape so there are two shawls that one which is crescent shaped and then there's a fuller um almost more hap style you okay. know size um so that's this one here beautiful oh. um so talk because about the sorry uh, talk about the lace though and how that's a traditional shetland lace yeah so this is um it gets called a uh, new shell um in shetland it's or razor shell um I think in the book I refer to it as razor shell. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's one of those simple Shetland lace patterns like the old shell um, or old shale, which yeah. are used in the traditional hats. So they're both quite simple lace patterns. And with this one, with the razor shell, it creates a more dramatic sort of peak than the old shell does, does which is a little bit more wavy. Yeah. Um, and I mean, my mum did offer, you know, traditional hats um, as part of the, the business. Um, but because I, you know, I already offer a hat pattern myself, I was like, well, I don't need to put that in the book. So I thought, well, take the, the new shell, the razor shell, and kind of put that into a couple of shawls instead. Yeah, yeah. So it's still got kind of some of those traditional elements. Yeah. Um, and it's an easy lace. And, you know, it's great for striping yeah. colours, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, so that, that razor shell, which is the same as you see, you know, here, mm -hmm. um, it's also in another of the pieces, which is a fairly, you know, a lot of Shetland designers have, have their different versions of yeah. um, an all over razor shell sweater. Lovely. Um, lovely. So I did that too. Again, that was a piece that my mum wore a lot. Yeah. Um, it's in a lot of the pictures of her. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so the razor shell is kind of the primary lace that's used in um, throughout the book, right. um, yeah. uh, but it is a simple lace. And for this shawl, um, it's not a traditional hat construction. Um, what I did was I actually started at the outside edge. Ooh. So you cast on all the stitches first. Mm -hmm. And that's partly because you get better peaks okay. um, with the lace pattern. Yeah. If you begin, if you cast on and then begin the lace, yeah. then you get a more emphasized, you know, zigzag. Okay. Um, so then it just decreases, you know, yeah. um, up, up to here. Lovely. Um, yeah. And I quite, I quite like that construction. I've used it a little bit, you know, here and there in shawls, um, where you, your rows are getting shorter. Yeah, I suppose, exactly. the longer. <laughs> just, you have to be careful with, you know, counting as you cast on, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah and then um for i there's a couple of hats um in yeah. uh the book as well there's a beret Lovely. um and then there's a beanie version of of this as well and so again for this this wasn't based strictly on something my mum had done because she had lots of different hats and stuff like that this was more just kind of like again inspiration she had some berets in there and yeah. so i just you know used some other motifs yeah um so yeah it's kind of it's a mixture of complete replicas of some things um but as i said adding in those elements that you know there's some choice for the knitter as well um and then yeah some some things that are more my own you know yeah, I, I think it, things. it's going to it's going to be a lovely history of your family's um relationship with knitting in shetland as well as just documenting that history for all of us and giving us some new patterns to really enjoy and I love the schematics and the artwork if I can sort of not show that but you can see so my awesome. daughter did all of these did she yes um so this was another element like what when, when my mum ran the business she um she had these brochures made and the early brochures had um just hand drawings on them uh -huh. um which my grandmother did at the time oh. um so she i'm trying to think again if there's a picture in the book of any of the hand drawings there is just inside sort of where it says patricia's backstory yes, yes. there yes. so um so my grandmother was an artist and you know she did all those drawings um uh so i i asked and my daughter's studying art um right now so i asked yeah that she so it's knew. a real family affair going down the generations it is and also my sister 
So all the sort of um, the end pages that you see, yeah. the, all the botanical stuff. Yeah. Um, my sister did all of those, oh, and okay. um, she has kind of gotten back into um, art herself. Um, later in life, she lives in New Zealand now, oh. and um, so she's kind of the last few years she's been kind of focusing on that and she does a lot of sort of surface design pattern stuff oh, yes but inspired by um by her surroundings and stuff so the, yeah. the, the designs yeah just great yeah that's yeah so all the all the botanical designs in the book are my sister's and then all the schematics were done by my daughter Maya yeah. and each book when people order it will come wrapped in this um paper which you know has this surface design of my sisters on it too and that was partly um I mean again it was partly to sort of bring another family member in you know as as part of the process but um also kind of a nod to our mother because um she was very um green thumbed you know like she was had always had amazing plants and gardens and yeah. you know it's something that we all remember about her so yeah um it's nice to kind of yeah include yeah. that yeah that's lovely well, well done. I mean, this is definitely a labor of love that we're all going to have the chance to enjoy and knit from and just enjoy that history. And it's just beautiful to look at as well. I'm really enjoying this copy. Thank you for sending this to yes, us. You're welcome. <laughs> and we will, we will maybe think about trying to put a kit together out of the book with Jameson and Smith. I think that would be a lovely pairing and to offer yeah. the shop. Um, do you want to tell us a wee bit about what you're wearing? Oh yeah, so this, um, I'm about to release this um, pattern. It's called the High Desert Yoke. So this is inspired, the colors are inspired by my surroundings here in Reno. And um, particularly in the spring months, it feels so long ago now because it's been a very long, hot summer and I haven't been out on the hills. Um, but in the springtime, there's a really beautiful palette um, here, yeah. which surprised me when we first yeah. moved because it is so dry and, yeah. and hot in the summer. But there are a lot of spring flowers um, that come up on the hillside and sort of, yeah, deserty type shades. It's a high desert environment here. Um, so, yeah, I was like, oh, I really love that color yeah. palette. So that was sort of the focus for this. Um, yeah. So it's a yoke sweater. It, it also has a long sleeve option. Okay. And um, then it top down, yoke first. It's actually bottom up. Bottom up. This one. Okay. Yeah, I, I decided it. to go bottom up um, for this. And um, it has a few, I don't know how well you can see, but the, some of the, the stitches here are sort of stranded stitches. They're like, you slip, a stitch you slip the background color but you bring the contrast color in front so it's almost looks like a pearl stitch but it's not actually um so that's sort of dotted throughout here and um, and I've had some great testers for this you know this is the thing that I love about that that testing process especially with color work yeah. um that you know people just come up with some completely different palettes and yeah. it looks so different and amazing yeah. Um, so I'm pretty excited to, yeah, to share all of those. That, that will definitely be out by the time people see this, which is exactly. Great. And you're also working on your Hansel Hap, uh, a revamp of that. Is that fair to yes. say? Yes, yes. Um, I decided that, so often people ask me with that pattern, I, I can't remember when I first brought it out, but um, lots of people obviously want to kind of know, well, can I make it bigger or, you know, this kind of thing, which you totally can. Um, it involves maybe a little bit of math, uh, you know, depending on how you're approaching it. So I decided to, yeah, to revamp it so that there would be three different um, size options. So there is, the, you know, the full hat version, which is a square shawl, um, and then the half hat. Um, yes. So I am doing a sample for, um, for each of those um, in the new size. Um, and just, you know, and also to update the pattern to just kind of include some more video tutorials and things like that you know just yeah it was kind of time for for a redo um, and yeah. so the the half hat version that I'm working on just now this is in Jameson and Smith um yarn um and it's got it's kind of got a bit of a desert southwest um yes yeah I love that. It, um which <laughs> I'm not exactly sure where that came from but I really like it yeah, um, so currently working on that 
Um, and I'll probably take, you know, those projects with me to Shetland when I go in right. a few days time, because that seems like an appropriate thing to be knitting. Um, Absolutely. And it's a good, like, I I usually, um, I often will cast on a half actually for travel because it yeah. is, especially that first part of it. Yeah, it's easy. Working in the centre, it's just garter stitch. Like, yeah. it's a good yeah. travel yeah. project. So um, are, you like, are you like every other knitter where when you're traveling, you know exactly what you're bringing for knits and you might forget your toothbrush kind of thing? Or are you more... You know, I'm yourself? funny with travel knitting because usually I'll bring too much and <laughs> then end up not knitting at all. Like on flights, <laughs> you know, if I... Um, especially if I'm going to have to like consult my notes or, yeah. you know, I, do, I know now not to try and bring something that I'm in the middle of designing, yeah. you know, yeah. unless it's just, I just know I have a bunch of plain stocking yeah. net to do or something yeah. like that. Um, yeah, I, I usually will um, pick something kind of easier, yeah. you know, yeah, for sure. and I have, you know, done some sock knitting now because also of learning, like I just need something that I don't have to think about um, right. too much whilst I'm traveling. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but the hats for me do fall into that category. Yeah. Um, yeah, that I've knit so many now that um, it's a pretty low key yeah. thing to take along. Yeah. I have knitted a couple of your Hansel hats and I'll be knitting another one for sure. They're very addictive, but I do find I always get in trouble coming back this way. Things just may not. And it kills me because I'm like, I know I did it or I tried to watch what I was doing, but I do often. At the just, top of the diamond yeah, shape. Yeah, yeah. I have to fudge it a wee bit and it is fine. It's good. Which is fine. I mean, that's the funny. I mean, I teach this as a workshop a lot. Um, it's very popular. You know, people yeah. really want to learn about, you know, the traditions of hats and everything. Um, and the method that I use, you know, I should point out is the sort of the modern method yeah. of working from the centre and going yeah. out the way. Yes. Um, but most Shetlanders, probably, probably most Shetlanders still make their hats from the outside in. Um, so they're starting with the edging strip and working in the way instead. Right. Um, but I teach this modern method. I prefer it because um, because it is seamless and yep. um, and I do really like that yep. initial construction of the center where you yeah. make the yarn overs. Yeah. Um, but when I'm when I'm teaching it and we're doing the point where we're picking up all the yarn overs, yeah. If someone says like ah, I've only got seventeen on this side or what, you know, I'm like it's okay. Like there there's room for you know for us there to like get to the right stitch count yeah. um, and also I feel like Shetlanders also would have that approach to just like oh we'll be fine you know we'll yeah. just you know, yeah do nobody's this looking at your here. knitting that closely that they'd know so no and yeah. and I do always remember um Hazel Tyndall one time visiting our groups when we were in Shetland and saying you know talking about something that she had made or designed or whatever um, and there was a mistake and you know but she was like the man on the galloping horse won't see it, you know, <laughs> exactly. You know, it's like, we get very kind of fixated with everything having to be perfect. In, we do. In I know. And and it's, it doesn't need to be that way at all. No, it's not. It's not a rigid fabric. It's flexible, right. you know, all of that. Yeah. But having said that, you know, these these are things that I want to try and um, make clearer in the pattern right. as well, just yeah. so that, you know, yeah, people can really um, see and understand what they're doing. Yeah. At different stages of the construction yeah. um because also for a lot of people they find the the edging mm -hmm. beginning the edging challenging if they yeah. haven't done that kind of yeah. attached edging before then their mind is just like i don't understand <laughs> what's happening here so yeah. again i like want to have you know more tutorials to go, go with it that's yeah. really really great so um but you don't have a date for that going live that's i don't know yeah. because of how this summer has been for me like i haven't I haven't been working as much as I might have expected to because yeah. of the heat and yeah. um, smoke and all of that. Like yeah. I haven't really wanted to touch my knitting, you know, because right. it's so hot it's and too, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I'll probably get a lot done when I'm in Shetland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so jealous that you're getting to go home and, and have a couple of weeks there. And it sounds like you still have family there too. Yeah. So my dad lives there um, still. And um, my older brother has now moved back to Shetland. Um, so he's the eldest in our family and, you know, he really has the strongest memories of being mm -hmm. a child in Shetland. Yeah. You know, he's sort of the one that we all kind of go to for, for the memories, you know, yeah. he, he's got them all. Yeah. Um, and he, um, 
well, during the pandemic, actually, he went up to Shetland um, to kind of be with my dad yeah. and um, was working remotely. He's a school teacher, okay. a primary school teacher. Um, and then he would had this long term plan to get back to Shetland and build his own house, basically yep. beside my dad, yep. kind of on part of my dad's um, property. And he just decided, yeah, now is a good time Bring to make forward. that move. Yeah. Um, and he is actually now the principal teacher at the school that he used to attend um, <laughs> and my sister as well um, on the west side of Shetland in Sandness. Um, oh, wow. So he yeah, he's now the school Definitely. teacher there and, you know, um, lives a few miles down the road and That's he'll be building funny. building. I think he's building his house um, next year. I think work will start on yeah. that. So yeah. so I will see both of them. Yeah. When I go, um, which yeah. will be fantastic and do you have any uh any plans in the works for you and mj to take a trip with people with knitters or is that sort of far yeah away? i mean we hope to do that in you know next summer and um, we basically sort of had to postpone mm -hmm. two groups who were set up for 2020 and yeah. um, so um they are still patiently waiting yeah. and um i think maybe only one person has had to you know drop out yeah um but everybody else is like still want to go when we can yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, fingers crossed, we can do that safely yeah. in 2022 and kind of get back into that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause that was definitely a big part of, you know, both of our summers, um, you know, is getting to be there. So yeah. 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 And I, yeah, I haven't it's seen Mary great. Jane for in person for ages and I know we to get to, to Rhinebeck, um, in the fall. Yeah. So, um, both Mary Jane and I are going to be signing books at Rhinebeck. So okay. she has her Fair All Weekend book. Yes. Um, so yeah, that that's mid October, I guess. Fantastic. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. Well, that's great. It's been lovely, so lovely to talk to you and hear all about your book and your knitting and your trip home and everything. Thanks so much for spending time with with us. I know that um, our viewers are going to love uh, hearing from you. So thanks so much for your time. Thank you, it's been a pleasure.